Today we have a lot of interesting stuff we got to do around the farm, mostly pig work, but we also going to do a little update on how the field's coming along, how the corn's coming up, how the beans are coming up, how they're looking. Side note, we got to really get this stuff cleaned up. This stuff right here is just dried up feed that's getting dried up onto the bin pad. And it doesn't look good and it doesn't really smell very good. So uh, sometime this week I'm going to get around to doing it, but probably not today. It could get a little loud in here with just the pigs and the feed system and all that, but I'm going to talk really loud for you guys. Uh, this is our site one barn. This is the only site that has pigs in it right now. We just finished getting the rest of the pigs out of there, so it's sitting empty for now. We should be getting pigs in there in about a week or so, uh, so it's just kind of a waiting game for now. This room that I'm in now is the biggest group of pigs we have in this site. Uh, this is our southwest room, and they're... You know, they're getting really close to being at market. If this whole coronavirus thing didn't happen, these pigs would have been long gone by now. But with everything that had happened and everything that is happening, we had to stunt their growth a little bit. So they're not to where they should be if everything was just normal. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. You okay? So that's just kind of a little update on how our oldest pigs are doing. These pigs should be going out in a week or so just because they're gonna to get to the market size that we want and it'll be time to get them out of here. One thing I really wanna discuss with you guys is how the coronavirus has affected not only pig farmers, but farmers in general. A lot of areas suffered during this coronavirus and are still suffering because of this coronavirus thing. I know for us in pig farming and grain farming, both sides of that are, are affected by this as well. Uh, pig farming has really been affected by this and I'll get into the details of, as to why. So when this whole thing started to come around and processing plants started to shut down because of it, because the workers were getting sick and also the freezers were getting full. They weren't, they weren't sending out enough meat because the restaurants weren't open, the hotels weren't open, the events weren't going on. All that stuff wasn't happening. So that meat wasn't getting shipped off to like normal. So a lot of these companies, what they tried to do was stunt the growth of the pigs because we had a lot of pigs sitting in barns and we had a lot of pigs getting born and you know, there wasn't really a market for some of these pigs. A couple ways that they tried to stunt the growth was changing up the formula of the feed and also maybe having just the feeders full every other day instead of every single day. That was a way that we really tried to stunt the growth of some pigs. But pig farmers still got pigs too big and ultimately those pigs had to get euthanized because the processing plants couldn't accept them. These processing plants are specifically designed for a certain range of weight for the pig. 275 to 300 is about the range that they can accept the pig, maybe a little bit heavier than that. Every single surface in that processing plant has to be USDA approved. Everything that pig touches has to be USDA approved. So let's say you're, you know, they hung up the carcass and it's going around in the, on the conveyor thing and the snout touches the ground of the processing plant because it's a too big of a pig. That surface isn't USDA approved, so now that pig and that carcass cannot be used or shipped out anywhere. So you pretty much just wasted a pig, you wasted your resources on a pig that now can't be sold because it touched a surface that's not USDA approved. And it's like that with everything. Everything in there has to be the way they designed it. It has to have the pigs at a certain weight because that's what they designed the processing plant to be. You gotta ask yourself, would you wanna eat a pig or something that came from a pig that touched a surface that wasn't USDA approved? I know I wouldn't, and I know you guys don't want that either. So that's kind of the reason why these companies and these people had to ultimately euthanize some pigs that got way too big. So long story short, a lot of people and a lot of companies that own the pigs out there were losing a ton of money because they had nowhere to take the pigs. And they're having pigs born every day, and it was just a huge, huge mess. They had nowhere to take the little pigs because the big the barns were full, and the barns were full, and they couldn't take them to the processing plant because they were closed. Luckily, these processing plants are starting to slowly open up again, and they're almost to full capacity again. To be honest with you, I don't know if these processing plants will ever get back to 100%, just because after all this, I think OSHA is just going to go in there and totally regulate the crap out of it. And if that's the case, these, these companies that own the pigs are never going to be able to scale like they used to. Because if, they, if the processing plants can't take as many pigs as they were once were taking, there's no way you're going to be able to just keep you know, growing your herd and just keep growing in sows because it won't work. Processing plants, if you can't process the pigs fast enough, you can't grow, you can't grow your herd bigger. So Sawyer, how is the grain farming side of things affected by this? Well, where a lot of this corn goes and gets grinded up into 
is pig feed. A lot of this stuff gets ground up into pig feed and also ethanol. Uh, and if we're feeding our pigs less and we're not giving the pigs the, the amount that we once were giving them, we're not going to need as much corn. We're not going to need as much feed. So that means we already have kind of enough for it. So that means that corn's going to get sold at a lower price than it once was. So if we're going to get this grain farming thing back up, we need to really get these pigs eating the work they once were. And also, we got to figure out this ethanol deal because ethanol isn't worth a crap. We're not selling our corn for ethanol, uh, even close to what we once were. And um, until that happens, we're not going to get anywhere with the, the corn price right now. My dad talked about it in our side dressing video. He thinks that... <laughs> By the time it goes, by the time harvest comes around, it'll be about two dollars and fifty cents a bushel, which is really, really bad. That, that's like not good at all. So um, we'll just see. I mean, you can only do so much as one man, but that's kind of how coronavirus has affected uh, grain farming. As far as beef and dairy, I'm not really sure how they've been affected that much just because I'm not in that industry, but I'm sure they've been affected just as much as the pig farmers out there and the grain farmers out there. So everybody is taking a hit on this, but I just know what I know and I know what we do on a daily basis and how we're affected by it. So I'm just sharing my experience and my thoughts on it. I hope you guys thought that was valuable and I hope you guys gained a little insight on what us farmers are dealing with as far as the coronavirus and how we're being affected by it. Now that all that's out of the way, let's actually get into doing some stuff around here. The first thing that we gotta do is we gotta get all five of these fans moving on this west side of this north building. All the way down at the east side, all five fans are open and running. The reason they're not running is we don't have the shutters in here. This is the only fan that has the shutter in. The other shutters are at the barn, and I have to grab them, take these out, and put those in. Move! Get out the way! Get out the way! It's very rare you see a pig with blue eyes. I love always coming across one that has blue eyes because it's not common. Look at them damn eyes. Ocean Blues, baby. This one's going to be called Ocean. Ocean. Your name is Ocean from now on, buddy. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to the barn. We're going to try to find those shutters. I don't know exactly which barn it is. It could be in that barn or it could be in the main barn that we have, but I don't know. We're just going to have to look. Did I also mention it is a beautiful day out? It's about 86 degrees, not a very much wind at all, which I would do a little bit of wind just because it's really hot. We're going to check and see if they're in here first. Oh, there it is. There they are. Those are the shutters that we need. First place to look. That's That rarely happens that there's the first place you look, that's where it's at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load these babies up into the back of my truck, take them over to the west side of our north barn. side of the hog building and set them up there and we might do it today or tomorrow I don't know yet I probably should have wore gloves in there with these because you can tell they're not the they're not the most clean thing but I don't have any gloves on me so grow baby grow they're coming along nice the magical fruit that makes you fart is coming around nice I'm just kidding that's not baked beans these are soybeans but anyway they're growing they're growing nice and uh, yeah just keep growing baby You're probably wondering hey Sawyer why don't you just have the shutters in all the time and not just you know part time of the year well when it's in the winter time you really want to eliminate the, as much you know cold air moving through these fans as possible so that's why we put those in instead of the shutters uh, but when you get to this time of year like I said it gets hot and you want to have those fans going and put those shutters in so that's why now that that's done I'm gonna head over and eat some lunch because it's 1 30 and I haven't eaten lunch yet I'm pretty hungry I get hung I get pretty hangry if I don't eat. If you don't know this about me, I do not get in a good mood when I am hungry. So 
I have to eat if I'm gonna be in a good mood and have a good time farming. So that's what I'm gonna go do and then we're gonna do some other things afterwards. So next on the agenda is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start washing the rest of the mats that I haven't washed yet in this Site 2 barn of ours. I got everything washed as far as the building goes. All I have to do is I have one set of mats in the south room that I have to wash. Then everything will be washed, sanitized, and ready to go uh, for when the pigs get here. I just got done washing. I'm done washing this whole building. Everything is washed that needs to be washed. So thank the Lord because I, when you do that for a while and you do it, you do a whole barn, you're pretty much burned out on power washing until you have to power wash the next barn. So I'll be good on power washing for a while. I'm probably going to call it a day and then tomorrow we're going to do some more work. I got to do some mowing. I got to do some more. I got to put this barn back together put all the feeders where they need to be, all the nipple bars where they need to be, all the mats where they need to be. Just make sure everything's ready so when we get pigs here, everything's good to go. We're back with another day of farming today. Early this morning, we're gonna get those shutters in to the fans. That way that these fans can blow some air in here. It can be nice and cool throughout the summer. Outside. Outside. Huh? Outside. So what we're doing is greasing the fan up because when we replace these shutters, it's just a good idea to grease them up, get everything loose. Yeah, buddy. Now that that's done, it's time to do some daily chores, check up on the pigs, make sure everything is going good. First thing I look for is hopefully I can get in the pen. Big old buddy will get out of the way. Look for the feed, make sure the feed's full. Typically in the morning, the feeders will be full just because the feed system runs early in the morning. So if you come here early in the morning and they're out of feed, that's when you know probably the bin's out or something's clogged up. But if they're full, that means everything's good. So we're good here. Water. There's water in the cup. That means that's good. They're drinking out of it fine. He's a happy pig. All right, so we're good here. Now what I'll do is I'll just walk through, make sure everything's good, check and see if there's any uh, dead pigs because dead pigs are a thing that happens and you just really want to make sure that you get them out if there is any. Hey dad, come on, you forgot your glasses. You can't be forgetting stuff. You gotta always remember where your stuff's at. Come on now, come on. Dad, I don't want to hear it anymore. You give me crap for losing my stuff and 
not keeping track of my stuff. You're just as bad as I am. You leave your stuff up here just as much as I leave stuff up here. Dads will lecture you, but they'll do the exact same thing and then they don't want to lecture back. On a more serious note, I got the pigs chored. You can hear the feed system running right now. They got feed, they got water. I got the deads out. Everything seems to be good there. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is head over to our site two barn and I'm gonna get that baby all ready to go by putting the feeders back, putting the mats where they need to be and having the nipple bars turned on and put where they're supposed to be. I will see how much I wanna get done today. I might just do one room. If I'm feeling it, I might just do the whole building. We'll just see how it goes. What a beautiful day out here. Just sunny, sun shining, great day. Not wet at all. Love, gotta love the sunshine out here. Gotta love it. got done getting this whole north room all put back together the way I want it uh, mats where they need to be feeders where they need to be gates where they need to be everything's good to go in here we're gonna be getting pigs I think next Monday so we're on the schedule to go next Monday get some wiener pigs didn't take very long it usually doesn't I'm just glad that we're gonna get this thing filled that's pretty much it guys if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up really helps me out and pushes my content further for more farmers and people like you to see it. Feel free to subscribe if you like who I am and you wanna know more about what this farm's about. Hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I post a video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.